As the holiday season itself draws near, it's nice to have a new certified holiday classic. I'd like to propose a toast to my two unlikely companions. Are you trying to lift down my shirt? No. <laughs> yes. You're gonna get me fired. This is your Rubicon. Do not cross the Rubicon. The Holdovers. And today we have The Holdovers. I want to preface this by thanking, as always, my local Odd House Cinema over at the uh, Bell Court. Uh, I, I know I always talk about them a lot. They're a Nashville nonprofit art house cinema. Love them to death. Their programming these last couple years has been especially fire, but had a very special, borderline limited engagement of sorts. Uh, this film was technically shot on 35 millimeter film, but as it turns out, only five theaters nationwide, that's five theaters in the US, got access to it. And I happen to be lucky enough to be able to see this film in one of the five. So thanks to Bellacourt, thanks to the experience of that, which I'll be factoring into the review momentarily, but want to get that out of the way real quick. But yeah, Holdovers, uh, it's just another holiday Christmas film. Now, typically when I think of holiday classics, you know me, unconventional guy, so I have unconventional holiday favorites. For me, a great Christmas film is more on the lines of Gremlins or The Hateful Eight. <laughs> Or, or, and I'll die on this hill, uh, Die Hard. I, uh, films like that. I can list other Christmas classics like Krampus or what have you, but you get my point. So it's kind of almost unorthodox for me to actually find a film that is genuine Christmas slash holiday film and genuinely enjoy it, genuinely like it, and would go so far as to add it to said list. The Holdovers is directed by an Alexander Payne. Apparently some... Uh, he's a known quantity in film. I am actually unfamiliar with his work. Well, I say that. I haven't watched his other works. I think the, the most recent film he did besides this was one that I actually... I don't know why I skipped it. I just didn't get around to watching it. Downsizing is the movie. I heard not great reviews. <laughs> But I did, Downsizing was the last film that he did. But what I, apparently what he's well known for in the film that's like even posted on the, the poster for this film is what, uh, Sideways? Evidently this guy did Sideways and it's supposed to be a really good movie. I have not seen it. I digress. This man has been making films since 1985. He's been around the block a couple times. So the main attraction for this film, and a large, uh, and I'd say a good majority of the reason why I wanted to see it in the first place, is because it stars Paul Giamatti, and he's been in so much. He's been in so many different things, but I always like him. He can play the serious man, he can play the joker, the comedian, what have you. In this case, he's just an uptight professor, but at the same time also incidentally provides the quick wit and comic relief in the film. His IMDB is numerous, good, bad, the, the whatever, I don't know, but like, he never gives a dull performance. He never turns in a bad performance in my opinion, from what I've seen. But he has worked with this director in that movie, the aforementioned Sideways, but funny enough, what my generation might know him for is the role of the guy who swims in his pool and gets covered blue in, uh, what, Big Fat Liar? <laughs> so, it's just, I don't know. You can see he takes anything from serious roles to funny, more comedic roles, and we, we, most of us love him for it. Arguably the secondary protagonist, I would say there are three primary protagonists in this film. The secondary is played by a Dominic Sessa? 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 This is this man's acting debut. And I'm surprised given the performance that was turned in, but this man, unless there's something like a deeper cut here, I this is his first film that he's ever acted in. And of course, as I said, three primary protagonists. She's also on the poster and I would be remiss. It would be criminal negligence if I didn't also acknowledge our third star of this film. I think it's Divine. If I'm being phonetic about it, could be Divine, but let's just say, the Divine, <laughs> Divine Joy Randolph, who incidentally, although I didn't make direct reference to her, she's been in films, multiple films that I've covered on my channel. 
She was Sandra Bullock's friend in The Lost City, which is actually kind of a sleeper hit romantic comedy. And she was the voice of Mama Luna from Puss in Boots The Last Wish, the uh, the cat lady. Like Paul Giamatti, she's a well-versed and talented actor, so. But let's get on to brass tacks in terms of was this movie good? The whole premise of The Holdovers is literally like, it takes place in the 70s, right? It's like a boarding school in the 70s. It's the holiday season. But every year, there's always a small group of students of unfortunates who just, they don't have anywhere to go during the holiday break. So they are held over at the boarding school. And one teacher or a faculty, staff member, whoever, is basically tasked with being their ward, watching over them during that two-week holiday break. And that's where we end up right now, is the Dominic's character, along with a few other students and Paul Giamatti having to watch over them with Miss Joy Randolph's character also you know just not chooses to stay for her own reasons that I don't want to divulge too much into now but they're all here just kind of chilling for two weeks and the comedy ensues because as I said Paul Giamatti kind of plays this very intellectual but still kind of a tight ass professor on paper and on in the trailer it seems like it's going to be a cheesy like you know what happens when you get this group of kids in the school and this teacher who's all uptight has to watch over them but luckily expectations are subverted as I said one of the biggest pros of this film to me anyhow is the fact that I was very lucky to get to see it on 35 millimeter film also worth mentioning I went to the one opening night showing of this where uh, if I can find a picture of her, I'll put her up here because I do want to give credit where credit's due. We had the Chair of Cinema and Media Arts from Vanderbilt University, uh, Claire Sisko King. She also did an introduction, and I can tell there's a there's heart, there's reverence for cinema in how she introed the film and discusses. Uh, she, she speaks like I do about film, like with heart, with passion, not to make some type of like equation. She's way more experienced and educated than I am. But she pointed out a fact about this experience that I wholeheartedly agree with, which is that seeing this film on 35 millimeter, I don't know if you guys have seen a movie not digitized, you know, just like on film, but like even with a brand new one it's 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 the imperfections it's the quality of it it's 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 inherently different it's not going to be in like 4k high resolution it makes the time period the film takes place in it all matches up it's a film that takes place in the 70s and you're watching it on film it's almost like i wouldn't want to watch this film any other way i'm not sure if i want to watch this in 4k the scene this made it feel like it matched the time period made it feel cozy as if i was watching a film that's already been established as a holiday classic they nailed the aesthetic of this and seeing it in 35 millimeter only enhanced the experience so i walked out of this film there's got some reviews coming up down the pipeline for some recent releases and this is one of the ones where i'm like we got a bunch of bangers in a row this is one of the very few situations where i walk out of a film and i have no notes i have not i have nothing to like criticize or detract from. I don't like to just toss this word around, but I genuinely felt this film accomplishes exactly what it set out to do. And it's like, a, 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 I would say it's like a little holiday masterpiece. It's, it's really, it's just a well done film. I'm sure people will disagree, but I loved this thing. The performances are great from everybody, even ancillary characters, everybody from little kids that only get a few lines to the main cast of characters, Giamatti and the crew, everybody turns in a great performance performance that is true to their characters, provides us character arcs, emotional endearing moments. Like I said, the comedic hijinks ensue in this film, sure, but they're they're done so well. And the number of times that I got misty-eyed in this film, just from the, the scene, the emotion, the character performances, like I said, no notes, no complaints, performances were stellar, killer, it was great. I, I cared about all the characters, like maybe an asshole or two in the, maybe a couple of the kids were kind of assholes, but the kids will be kids, right? I, I guess. But the main cast of characters, I so, so cared for all of them. Like I just said as well, the pacing and the story of this film is great in my opinion. I think it's paced well. I don't think any seconds or film are wasted. We set this scene at the beginning of the movie. We are introduced to our characters in the first act. And then, I mean, obviously I'm just laying out for you how a classic narrative structure is for film but the story is endearing and heartfelt and engaging
aging, kind of borderline coming of age, but at the same time, it's that dynamic of like old grizzled person, younger, more volatile, emotional person, and they're both, out of all the kids that are there, there's most focus, you know, obviously from the poster and the trailers, on Paul Giamatti and Dominic Sessa's characters, respectively. And they're kind of, they clash and butt heads a lot. But at the same time, from that point, you know, there's a begrudging respect that grows into learning from each other, learning about themselves, learning about each other, and having their own character arcs and becoming more or less different people, kind of, by the end of the film. But this film deals with a lot of different, really heavy themes. Everything from family, to found family, to loss, to touching on the Vietnam War, and just the, the state of the world in the 70s, and kind of what boarding schools what were like, and probably still are like, and just you know you never really know somebody until you get to know them you know what i mean you know family is who you make it in these bonds relationships i i can go on and on but i don't really feel like spoiling the film honestly i was pleasantly surprised i was expecting a certain type of film from the trailer that i saw and i was pleasantly surprised and i believe my expectations were heavily subverted i thought the film was going to match more the tone mood the theme of the trailer but yes but actually no it it, it, it handles the source material in a much more serious light while still maintaining some frequent moments of levity throughout but like i said this film is a, is a masterful balancing act in theme and tone <laughs> i digress i i don't want to get into specifics i don't want to spoil the film i recommend going in as blind as possible to get the full narrative experience just watch the trailer see if that piques your interest in any way shape or form and then go for it if you're feeling up to it but i would highly recommend it i heard some whispers as i was walking outside from some older couples and i think one person said it's not as good as sideways i thought the pacing was sure it just goes to show that people's opinions you know vary person to person based on preference but personally this person believes that it was perfectly paced. It's a great film. I would love to watch it again. I wouldn't be surprised if this did make it to like my must watch like yearly holiday classics. Like if this made it into circulation for my traditional yearly list of like Christmas watches. For all those reasons and more, I would gladly give The Holdovers, you guessed it, a 5 out of 5. I would give The Holdovers a 5 out of 5. I'm very surprised how I ended up feeling about it. But like I said, I'm always down for a pleasant surprise. I love it when a film can exceed my expectations and then some and yeah it's just really good if you are one of the lucky people nearby a theater one of the five that has a 35 millimeter copy of it 100 percent required watch go for it otherwise if it's just playing near you still go for it you'll laugh you'll cry you might even die a little bit inside but you know that's the mark of a great film right thank you for watching stay tuned for the next episode of whatever movie i review hopefully we got some more holiday stuff coming up since we're getting into thanksgiving and this early christmas joint as well surprise surprise who knew but thanks and <laughs> goodbye travelers